So to explain the mechanism of imatinib, we have to recall what is tyrosine kinase and how mutation in chronic myeloid leukemia affects the function of tyrosine kinase. Recall that we have a chromosome 9 and on chromosome 9 located ABL1 gene that encodes a specific enzyme called tyrosine kinase. The function of tyrosine kinase is to activate proteins that are responsible for cell proliferation. And activation of proteins occurs by phosphorylation. Tyrosine kinase uses ATP molecule and phosphorylates proteins. Important that tyrosine kinase mostly regulates the proliferation rate of granulocytes, which are neutrophils, basophils and eosinophils. Recall that hematopoiesis can be subdivided on myelopoiesis and lymphopoiesis, and myelopoiesis can be subdivided on erythropoiesis, thrombopoiesis and monocytopoiesis, and finally granulopoiesis. And to the final products of granulopoiesis belongs neutrophils, basophils and eosinophils. The state of tyrosine kinase is regulated by the cytokines, that are produced mostly by the bone marrow microenvironment, in normal condition, tyrosine kinase remains passive until it receives signal by cytokines. But if mutation occurs that force pathological crossover between chromosome 9 and 22, the ABL1 gene from chromosome 9 will be translocated to chromosome 22 in exchange for a part of chromosome 22 region. This results in formation of a fusion gene called bcr one where ABL1 has very high activity. Because ABL1 encodes tyrosine kinase, the higher the activity of ABL1 gene, the higher will be the activity of tyrosine kinase. So tyrosine kinase becomes constantly active. With increase in activity of tyrosine kinase, phosphorylation and thereby activation of proteins that are responsible for cell proliferation increase, thereby granulocytes production increase. So, as a result of this mutation, the amount of neutrophils, basophils and eosinophils in the blood begin to progressively increase. And exactly over production, this progressive accumulation of granulocytes in the blood, called chronic myeloid leukemia. And chromosome 22 that is formed by pathological reciprocal translocation with bcr abel one gene, called Philadelphia chromosome. Basically, the amount of granulocytes in the blood is determined by granulocytes production and degradation. So to decrease the amount of granulocytes in the blood, we have two options. We can stimulate the degradation of granulocytes, or somehow we have to decrease their production. And to decrease the production of granulocytes, we use imatinib. Imatinib blocks ATP binding site on tyrosine kinase. So now ATP molecule cannot bind to tyrosine kinase, without binding of ATP molecule phosphorylation becomes impossible, and without phosphorylation proteins that are responsible for granulocytes proliferation cannot be activated, thereby granulocytes production will decrease, and this time this will cause decrease in amount of neutrophils, basophils and eosinophils in the blood, simple as that. But imatinib has some significant side effects. And the most interesting one is edema, especially periorbital edema. Recall that cardiovascular system is a closed system, where fluid exchange occurs in capillaries, because capillaries have pores. So we have arterial circulation that delivers blood to capillaries, we have veins that provide outflow of blood from capillaries, and we have capillaries that have pores. Through these pores in capillaries, fluid with nutrients can enter into the interstitial space, where tissue receives vital substances, and then lymphatic system drains the excessive amount of fluid from the interstitial space into the venous system. And it turns out that one of the molecules that regulate the state of pores in capillaries, called platelet drift growth factor, that acts on platelet drift growth factor receptor on capillaries, and provides the constriction of pores, thereby regulating the amount of fluid that incomes to the interstitium. The problem is that imatinib blocks platelet drift growth factor receptor, so now pores become more dilated, the higher is the radius, the higher is the flow, 
so more fluid will income to the interstitial space and increasing amount of fluid in the interstitium cause edema. But the most prone tissue to edema is periorbital tissue. The reason is that anatomically periorbital tissue has poorly developed lymphatic system. So because in periorbital region the drainage of excessive fluid is significantly smaller compared to other tissues, the first site where edema develops its periorbital region. And also interesting that imatinib can cause muscle cramps. The concept here is that blood calcium level is regulated by the activity of osteoclasts that by bone resorption provide release of calcium from the bone tissue compartment into the blood. And also the second regulation is provided by calcium reabsorption that occurs mostly in the kidney. Imatinib somehow inhibits the function of osteoclast. And now calcium income from the bone tissue compartment decrease, thereby blood calcium level decrease. And decrease in blood calcium level can be so severe that it can cause muscle cramps. Also because blood calcium level decrease, to compensate this, parathyroid gland release parathyroid hormone. Parathyroid hormone provides stimulation of osteoclast and also it stimulates calcium reabsorption in the kidneys. So somehow it compensates decrease in calcium release. But the problem is that parathyroid hormone in the kidneys inhibit reabsorption of phosphate. And because the less amount of phosphate is absorbed into the blood, the greater amount of phosphate will be excreted by the urine, so it will cause phosphaturia. And obviously, phosphaturia will cause decrease in blood phosphate level. So, imatinib can cause hypocalcemia that can cause muscle cramps. Decrease in blood calcium level increase the level of parathyroid hormone, and also it can cause phosphaturia that potentially can cause decrease in blood phosphate level. Also, another side effects of imatinib are related to irritation of GI tract mucosa, its abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting and diarrhea. Overall, imatinib is a very potent drug that provides huge benefits for the patients with chronic myeloid leukemia. If you like content, please press like and subscribe button. All the best!